Good evening. I apologize for the delay. Uh, welcome to the School District of Springfield Township Board of School Directors, our regular board meeting. And we uh, had an executive session before this meeting to discuss the Act 93 agreement and school safety report. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, let's stand for a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Reading of the mission statement, the mission of the School District of Springfield Township is to educate and develop all students as learners and citizens who are high achieving, resilient, and responsible in a changing global community. Roll call, Mr. King. Mr. Bedard, here. Mr. Chapman, here. Ms. Jordan, here. Mr. Announcements. The board at its discretion may videotape all or any portion of public board meetings subject to the limitations set forth in policy 006.2 broadcasting of meetings. Board meetings will be broadcast on Friday afternoon following the board meeting. Are there any public comments on agenda items? Nope. Okay, thank you. Um, approval of minutes. May 20th, 2019 regular board meeting. Board minutes P. Is there a motion? And a second? Second. Any comments or questions? Mr. King? Mr. Gordon. Aye. Mr. Chapman. Aye. Ms. Jordan. Aye. Mr. Rappin. Aye. Ms. Sarsfield. Aye. Ms. Sapinski. Here. Excuse me. Here. Aye. Aye. <laughs> here. Aye. Aye. Here. Approval of the Treasurer's Report. Treasurer's Report. Aye. Is there a motion? Motion. And a second? Second. Any comments or questions? Aye. Reports and information, recognitions and award, uh, or awards, our retirees, Dr. Hacker. Okay, thank you. So generally at our last school board meeting of the current school year, we take the time and the opportunity to recognize our retirees who have given service to our school district. And generally at this time, I call upon our building principals or our department leaders in order to be able to come up because they know these individuals best to say a few words about each of them and the contributions that these individuals have made to our school district over their years of service. So at this time, it's my pleasure to ask Mrs. Van Voren to come up and to speak about her Enfield retirees, and I will scoot over and get a little parting gift that we have for them. Okay, so, is it? No? He's playing with me now. I know. <laughs> it's because they make me go first. Okay, so we have three people, three family members, retiring from Enfield this year. So our first one could not be here this evening. And our first member is Paula Sweeney. Paula has worked here in the school district of Springfield Township for 13 years as an instructional assistant in the special education department. Her pleasant and thoughtful demeanor with the students she serves it was a wonderful thing to watch. Paula was always willing to help out in any capacity. She supported her students with patience, generosity, and most of all, kindness. Her gentle presence will be greatly missed here at Enfield. So, for Paula, <laughs> could not be here tonight. Our second family member who chose to go to green your pastures, <laughs> next step in her future is Ms. Carolyn Lysaf. Carolyn. <laughs> Carolyn has been with the district for four years. She retired in November of this school year after being an instructional support aide with the, within the special education department. She was caring and kind to all of the students she served and they truly loved her. Her smile and laugh added much joy to any room. She was truly genuine in her care of others and was definitely missed this year. Carolyn, your friends at Enfield wish you the best of luck moving forward to your next endeavor. Come on down, Carolyn. Yeah. 
I wouldn't know what that feels like. <laughs> okay, so our third member of the Enfield family leaving is someone who was near and dear to my heart. And Janice, I'm not going to get emotional because we already did that. Janice Smith was dedicated to the school district of Springfield Township for the last 12 years as secretary at Enfield Elementary School. Janice is a dear and special person who enriched the entire Enfield community. Her dedication to the school, students, parents, and faculty was extraordinary. Her caring ways of asking about us and our life events and sharing with us about her loved ones made us all feel valued and connected. God help you if you came back from a vacation and you did not have pictures to share with Janice. Why didn't you take any pictures? So you really needed to, <laughs> and you needed to send them from your vacation destination as well. Janice has a unique mix of softness and toughness, and she knew how to get the job done. She was always honest, kind, trustworthy, and hardworking. Janice began her day with a smile and sought to help anyone in need, unless you made her mad. And then she would refer to you as Missy, and no one wanted to be called Missy. Janice, we wish you luck and happiness in your, all of your adventures, which Janice has already been back to sub, at Enfield. She's been very helpful at helping our new secretary get on her feet and helping with kindergarten registration and well, just about everything else, Janice. So keep coming back <laughs> and come on down, Janice. Congratulations. Good evening, everyone. How are we doing? I have the honor and the privilege of recognizing Ms. Pam McHugh, who began her time here in Springfield Township, part-time 1994, and then you became full-time in 1995. During that time, she worked at both Erdenheim and Enfield, and she worked with students who were identified as gifted through her years. You also helped out with many committees, including our Reading Olympics for many, many years. And one of the things I want to share with your family members here is that one of the things that makes Pam so special is just been your ability to authentically, authentically connect with families in such a sincere way. As a building principal for the past couple of years, I've had the chance to sit in lots of meetings with you. And one of the things I always left away with was that you had the ability to speak to the families and speak to the children about their strengths and their weaknesses. And you picked up on so many unique things that I think the parents were even surprised. How did you know that? But you knew that. And that goes back to who you are. You're someone who pays so much attention to the people who you work with. And around our school community, that's one of the things that as I speak with people, they always remember about you. You had this light about you as you buzz throughout the building. And you don't know it, but you haven't been here for a couple months, but your presence is still there. I will always remember, some, I learned a lot from you, and one of the things I'll remember most is just your ability to make sure that when you interact with people, make sure it counts, make sure it's, it's authentic, and make sure you take an opportunity to listen. As a young building principal, you always felt compelled to come in and share with me different ideas and give me feedback. And as I'm growing, I always appreciate it. And so I want to thank you. I want to wish you the best of luck in retirement. But I also want you to know that you are missed. You've touched the lives of many students through your years here, 24 years you've been here. And so your name rings throughout Springfield Township. And it's great to see that you get to cherish this moment with your family that is here with you this evening. So thank you so much for your service. And we appreciate you. Thank you. I want you to know that teachers are an interesting group. We're a combination of type A personalities 
mixed all the way to the other end of the spectrum with free thinkers. Some of us are warm and fuzzy, others are all business. Um, and there's a multitude of us that's in the middle. All of these personalities teach us something and teach your children about life and learning. We are more than a faculty, we are your friends, and we are your family. The focus that runs throughout the building is a dedication to your children and to each other. I never particularly liked the word teacher, because who am I to presume that I am the authority? But now in hindsight, I understand that being a teacher is so much more than instruction. Although we teach skills, facts, theories, and algorithms, we mostly teach curiosity, creativity, how to fail, honesty, the value of friendships, respect, and courage. I want you to know that your teachers show up every day. Your teachers show up every day um, dedicated to the children. Um, by the way, a huge shout out has to go to our specialists whose schedules are relentless but are the highlight of some of our children's days. When conversation begins next year, dear board, um, in terms of the contract, remember all of us, all of those who are in the trenches. I will always be grateful for the opportunity to have served this community, and thank you in advance for taking care of my three grandchildren. I consider my career to have been a true privilege and a blessing. Thank you. I can follow that, but you said it all. Um, I, I'm here tonight to thank Jane Zaitz um, for her service at the middle school. Um, Jane it has been with us for five years, six years, since 2013, um, so she just finished her sixth school year in the district. But did you know that Jane has been in a classroom, including this year's, for over 30 years? Um, Jane is a certified teacher. Um, and has worked in multiple states at multiple grade levels. And I went around actually asking people, I had to ask you earlier because I went around asking people and everybody puts you in the teens, like 16 years in the classroom or something like that. Um, but, but 30 years plus. Um, as I was going around talking to people, uh, they talked about you as an incredibly kind and compassionate person. Um, respectful of students as an individual and a multitasker and a reliable person and somebody who was there every day working for kids and that's something that I really appreciate about you. Um, you began uh, with, you, you've been working in our uh, instructional support program for um, the last couple of years since I've known you and I know that kids seek you out. They search you out for help um, because they know that you have a compassionate soul. Um, and, a, and a desire to be with them and to, and to want to help them. Um, I know that you play games with kids all the time, and I know that that's because you make them put their cell phones away um, and, and actually sit face to face with each other and learn some social skills uh, along with the content that you're trying to teach. So um, for all those reasons and, and for a lot more, I'm going to miss you. The middle school is going to miss you, and I want to thank you um, for all that you've done. Thank you, Jane. We have one retiree at the high school this year, that's Deb Berger. She's not uh, with us this evening, but um, I still wanted to speak and honor her. She's been, uh, Deb has been an instructional aide at the high school for 24 years in our special education department. You can count on Deb to do a job and do it right. Her strength was in, I guess it still is in, math and science, and she assisted students in those areas. She worked tires tirelessly in our ESY program when it first began and was there for many years in the classroom. She was always a positive person and advocated for all of our students. Uh, Deb Strentz, were, our students were sad to hear that she was retiring uh, when I spoke to them, and we appreciate everything that Deb Berger did for all of our students and wish her all the luck in the future. Thank you. I have the honor of 
one retiree from the business office. Um, like Janice, Beth has also started at Enfield for the first five years of her career. She's been with the district for a total of 12. There I am. <laughs> at Enfield, Beth steered the ship for both the principals, teaching staff, doing whatever needed to be done. She watched over the children, promoted compassion, care, understanding, and perhaps even wiped away a few tears. You know, it just dawned on me, that sounds like perfect training for working for a business administrator. <laughs> During her 17 years with the business office, Beth witnessed many changes. She worked with many different business administrators, learning to adapt to each of their personalities, the way they did things, how they did things, but I know that during that time, she provided each one of those the high level of support that she provided me over the last six years. Initially, when I was ramping up my learning curve when I came here six years ago, I relied on Beth for her knowledge of the staff, the culture here. But after that time period, I just began to really, again, always count on her to do what needed to be done. I admired and relied on the tremendous dedication to her position, to the staff, to the business office, the community. She was the mother of the business office. There was a lot of different personalities that came through that business office in the last six years, and it was always to be able to depend on you. Um, so I knew I was in good hands when I first got here, but, to, but now, Beth gets a chance, a well-deserved time to relax, dive into the book club, travel and spend time with her husband, John, her daughter, Kelly, son, Luke, and her beautiful grandchildren, Claire and Maeve. Our loss is their gain. Congratulations, Beth, and you will certainly be missed. So from transportation, we had uh, one retiree this year. He could not be here with us this evening. He actually is doing a little bit of traveling. Um, so Michael Severin is leaving the district after, you know what, I didn't do my homework because I wasn't expecting him to be here. Um, but after a good number of years in service, um, transportation's a little bit of an odd animal. So it's, it's kind of tough sometimes to survive for uh, a whole lot of time. But uh, Mike uh, was a big help to the department. He showed up for work for us every day. He made some tough decisions on the road that um, are challenging for a lot of our staff. So uh, like I said, my apologies. I haven't really prepared a whole lot, but um, I would like to thank Mike for his service. I wish he could be here this evening. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. So one thing that really struck me about Pam's remarks is that so many of the descriptors that she mentioned about what teachers do um, are so true about all of our retirees, regardless of their work or regardless of their position. These are all people who are not only invested in terms of moving forward the work of the district, but they all understand the importance of the work that they are doing and what it ultimately translates into in terms of benefits for the children in our school district. Whether it's through the personal relationships that they establish on the playground, in the classroom assisting teachers as our instructional assistants do, helping to transmit knowledge as those instructional assistants do side by side with our teachers, whether it's our bus drivers who greet them first thing in the morning, drop them off, grumpy as they may be at the end of a bad day, they're the ones that are encountering the children and trying to set the tone for them every single day that they are here on the job. And even Beth, though she works 
speaking of grumpy, <laughs> with Mr. King. Um, she understands. It's a rumor. It's all folklore. <laughs> it's just a rumor. She understands quite well, and maybe it's because she's married to a guy who drives buses for us as well, but she understands that all of the work that she does, even in the business office, her role is critical to our being able to support our staff to ensure that fiscal accountability and efficiency is exactly what we need in order to be able to deliver the services that we deliver to our students. And of course, I will tell you from personal experience, there is nothing more important than a school secretary or administrative assistant. How do I know that? Because my mom, who is 100 years old, reminds me of that every single day, that she ran the school when she was an elementary school secretary. So I know how critical that job is as well to the smooth organization, efficiency, and well-being in terms of the culture and the environment of that school. So that when parents walk in, they know they're being welcomed. So that the children feel safe and nurtured and comfortable in that school office. And so that teachers know if they need an extra pen or pencil, that secretary is going to hand it to them and make sure they can go about their business. So every single one of these positions is a critical position in terms of the work that gets done in our school district in order to support our kids. So again, thank you to all of you for the wonderful work that you've done and for all of the many contributions you've given to all of us. I know there are so many children out there who will remember you and will keep you in their hearts for the rest of their lives, so thank you. And with that, we're going to move on with the business portion of our meeting. You are most welcome to stay and to attend the board meeting. I have a fascinating budget presentation coming up. But if that's not your cup of tea, now's a good time to leave. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, reports of committee, property committee, Gretchen Slipinski. Thank you. We had a property committee meeting on Friday, June 14th at 8 a.m. in the administration conference room. Um, one of the things that we spent most of our time talking about was the options for disposition of the Enfield site. Um, we had a community meeting probably, what was it, like about a month ago, um, where we got a lot of fe feedback on what the community would like to see for that site. They had a lot of good ideas. Um, we synthesized all that into a summary, which we reviewed. Um, and then the committee just with the administration discussed options, what's feasible, what seemed a little out of scope. Um, the main topics brought up by the community were that they wanted us to think about that site, not just a site with a bunch of fields. Like, how could we really make that something that the whole um, larger Springfield community can use since it's su in such a central location? Um, and there were also people that were wondering how we could make that site have uses other than just for sports for the um, school community. So I think we came up with a lot of good ideas that seemed to be reasonable. So next steps, we asked for some information about um, what some of those options would cost and some thoughts from the architect, which we'll be probably be reviewing at our next property committee meeting. Um, and then from there, we'll put together um, a plan that we'll then share with the board and have another community meeting. Look at what those options are, what additional costs there would be. Um, but I think we came up with some really good ideas. If I can just add, I apologize for interrupting Mrs. Slipinski, but I do want to again mention that we have a videotaped recording of that meeting that we held for the community that is on the main page of our website. And we also have a frequently asked questions um, piece of information for anyone who has questions about some of the ideas being considered along with our plans for the site. We have been discussing this for quite a while, um, but we're coming up to a point where we want to really start looking at the reality and getting it underway so that we can have um, the fields that are needed in place there um, on time 
for the district to use. So getting up to the point where we really need to start making some decisions. Um, we had uh, some updates on the high school renovation. It's still on schedule. Um, the high school parking lot and roadways will be impacted by construction starting the week of June 17th. That means for anyone coming on and off the property, be aware that Springfield Way will be closed off and on. The, you'll lose access around the building while that work is being finalized. Um, there's also going to be uh, the needed work on Paper Mill Road that the district's required to do before the new entranceway can open. So there will be some impact of traffic while that work is being completed. Um, our new entrance by the stadium is scheduled to be opened by July um, 2019. So we anticipate that to happen. That's pretty exciting. We'll be able to be used. Um, the construction inside the high school is still ongoing. Um, it looks like maybe one of the large portions of the addition will be ahead of schedule, so that's good news. And um, this is all heading toward the high school athletic programs um, that want to start uh, the second week of August. So we're in crunch time for that. Um, the Early Learning Center is still on schedule. The front parking lot of Montgom Montgomery Avenue has been installed. Most of the building is now weather tight, which means they can start the work on the inside of the building. Um, and right now, the administration team is working just to confirm some of the exterior finishes with the architect. Anyone have any questions? Um, administrative reports, Dr. Hacker. Thank you. Um, all right. Oh, there, it's on. It's on. It's just not very loud. Okay. Um, first of all, before I begin our budget presentation and go through it fairly quickly, um, I did just want to thank all of the people who worked so incredibly hard for our two moving up ceremonies for fifth grade and for eighth grade, and who, who did such a wonderful job planning those, making those exciting events for our parents, particularly Craig Thorne, whose guys worked so incredibly hard setting up, breaking down all the chairs and the podiums and so forth, and of course at our high school graduation as well. And as you can very well imagine, parking is a really, really critical issue. Those guys exhibit patience as well as good judgment in terms of working with and handling all the many issues that come their way as people are trying to navigate their way onto our sites. They also assist people to get to their seats, especially visitors who can't necessarily get to their seats easily because of a particular disability or other issue. And they are really to be commended for the phenomenal job that they do. I also want to thank our building principals who organize those ceremonies and really do their best to make them very, very meaningful for all of our students. Um, we were blessed to have wonderful weather for graduation, which made it extraordinarily fantastic for all of those kids. A phenomenal senior class this year. A wonderful eighth grade class. We just had that moving up ceremony yesterday and a terrific fifth grade class as well. So I just want to thank all of those guys because so much work and effort goes into making sure those uh, events really come off without a hitch, and it's great. So um, as you know, I'm always fond of saying that our budget is that balance and blend between needs and wants, and trying to establish what we believe are the priorities for our school district, and understanding that even though we may have certain priorities and we may believe we have we may believe we have certain wants and needs, we understand that we have a responsibility to our community residents as well as they are the taxpayers who are helping to fund all of those different priorities and wants and needs. So we make sure that when we prepare the budget, we have to keep in mind all aspects of the programming that we offer to our students. 
First and foremost, we want to ensure that we maintain a really strong instructional program for all of our students. And that means different things to different people, whether it's our special education programs for those who need special education support, or whether it's our advanced placement students or everyone in between. We try to offer a vast array of courses for them so that students will have a wide selection of coursework, even within a relatively small academic high school. We also want to ensure that we offer a full complement of extracurricular activities and clubs because we know that part of a child's education is learning things such as the skills that are learned out on the fields. And that may be teamwork, it may be collaborating with others, it may be developing skills in the arts such as art programs, our music programs, our theater programs, or it may be clubs which pertain to a particular group of students' interests, such as our Spartan Culture Committee or the Anime Club. So we have a number of clubs that basically have been formulated and organized around the interests of the students. And we want to be able to help our students recognize what those interests are. We also know it's absolutely critical, and Pam actually did a wonderful job about talking about the value of our staff. We want to attract and keep a really good staff. We know we're in competition with other, not only fine school systems that surround us in this area and within the county, but we're also surrounded by a number of really wonderful parochial and private schools. So we're in competition with all of them for excellent staff members. So it's important for us to attract and to recruit and to hire the staff members who are best going to be able to capitalize on our children's abilities. We wanna make sure that we have a safe and secure district facilities environment. So that means not only maintaining district facilities so that they're clean, it means improving them, which as you all know has been a major priority over the past few years. It also means ensuring that we are updated in terms of safety and security. We read every day in the news about different ways that intruders can get into schools or that lockdown procedures have been improved. We want to make sure that not only are we practicing those things, but that our facilities reflect those safety measures as well. And then finally, we know that in doing all of that and in providing all of that, again, we have tremendous accountability to our tax base here in the school district of Springfield Township. We have to really scrutinize our expenditures. And that means that before we necessarily approve something, we have to take a good hard look and make sure, are we getting the value that we believe is worth that investment in terms of what that expenditure is going to buy for us? So this gives you a quick look back to January where we were um, just a short time ago. At that point for the preliminary budget, we were looking at a 5.64% tax increase, which would have generated dollars that were needed at that point. Once we compile, compiled all of our needs and wants, we found out it was going to cost us quite a bit of money, about $2.4 million then we were allowed to be able to be spending according to the state's Pennsylvania Act 1 index, which was set at 2.3%. That only raised a million dollars. So we were $1.4 million in the hole or with a deficit of $1.4 million. That's exactly how much money had to be cut from the budget if we were to get down to the Act 1 index. 1.4 million is quite a hefty sum. So when I go back to those building principals and department heads and say to them, start cutting your budgets, you can imagine the gnashing of the teeth and the whining and the crying and the tears. So this is where our money comes from and it gives you a look at what we at this point in June are projecting for our revenue sources. Um, we know that we get a certain amount of money at the state level and the federal level. If you look, there actually is a teeny bit of red in there at the very top, under the, between the three and the one of the $59,318,000 number. That teeny tiny sliver 
represents slightly over $400,000, a very generous contribution from the federal government to the education of our children here in Springfield Township. At the state level, we do a little bit better than that. The state gives us approximately $11 million. That's their contribute, contribution to our budget in order to help us fund our children. But that big green portion of the pie, a little bit more than three quarters of it, that's the contribution made by every single resident within Springfield Township. That represents the revenue that we receive from taxpayers. There are other small sources of revenue that we get as well that contribute to the budget. So not all of that green section comes from taxpayers, but the lion's share of it does. In other words, the obligation to fund our schools is squarely on the shoulders of the residents. This shows you how our budget has grown over time. If you take a look here at this $62 million number, that actually represents this last kind of orangey colored column, which is where we are now. This is the expense portion of the budget. If you recall, I said this was the revenue portion of the budget. So in other words, this is how much we take in. However, this is how much we believe we need to be spending when we total everything up. And remember, this figure is less than what it was in January. Over time, the budget has continued to increase. Needs have increased over time. And our priorities have changed over time, which accounts for the fact that since the 2013-14 school year, which is the first orange slice in this chart, our budget expenditures were approximately $48 million. But since that time, and it's been six years between that time and the current budget year that we're going out for with this budget, we've had numerous other needs which have resulted, for example, in additional staff, construction projects, and other kinds of issues for the school district. This is where the money is spent in the budget. If you take a look at the two largest pieces of the pie, the green slice at a slightly over 27 million represents our expenditures on salaries, including all of our staff members. That's everyone in the district. And $15 million, or 15 and a half approximately, on all of the benefits. And that's not, of course, just including health care. It includes all of the associated benefits, including, for example, unemployment insurance, workman's compensation, PEASER's contributions, and so forth. So close to $43 million of that 59 million revenue or the $62 million expenditure figure is spent just on salaries and benefits. And we are a human capital business. We don't make widgets. We don't sell things for profits. We don't have assembly lines. We have caring individuals who work with our children as Pam so eloquently put it. So we have to invest in those people. And this is essentially where the money goes. When you take a look at all of the other pieces of the pie, and this even includes the debt that we have wrapped into our budget for the coming year for our construction projects, the principal and interest in bonds that we've taken out, supplies, equipment, all of our Chromebooks, textbooks, all of those things. They're all listed down here. Buying paper towels for the bathrooms, toilet paper, it's all here. Look how tiny that portion of our entire budget is for all of those things. So when you talk about trying to cut the budget, unless you cut the portion that makes it so expensive, your staff members, it's very challenging to find cuts in those other areas. 
So this is the difference that I referenced before between our revenues and our expenses. I gave you that $59 million figure before for all of the revenue that we anticipate that we are going to be bringing in from all of our sources. And after all of our gnashing of the teeth and our budget cutting in all of our departments and buildings and compiling all of the figures, this is what we anticipate our expenditures are going to have to be, just slightly over $62 million. So that gives us a difference of $2.7 million. So where does that money come from? Well, the lion's share of it, believe it or not, this year, in addition to all of the cuts that we've already made in the budget, is going to come from our fund balance. We're very, very fortunate in the school district of Springfield Township. We've always believed in the importance of maintaining a very healthy fund balance. We believe in that for several reasons. Most importantly, similar to a personal bank account, it's our rainy day fund. You never can predict in a school system what major emergencies will come along, which will require expenditures, particularly in capital projects. You never know what something's going to cost. It's very, very important to have money behind you in the fund balance so that you can do the projects that you feel need to be done. Those improvements are extraordinarily costly. So as you can see, we're taking money from our capital reserve and shifting it over to help pay for some of the things in capital projects that we will be doing in our budget. We're taking some of the money that we set aside in anticipation of continued increases in the cost of our retirement system, and we're using that to offset those costs this year. So some of that money was squirreled away, banked in a separate account, and now we're drawing it down in order to help us with that cost in our budget. Other areas, as you can see, facilities, equipment, some interest payments that have to be made. Again, we have significant debt, so we're wrapping this into our budget, and some extraordinary special ed costs as well. So fund balance is going to be the primary area where we get most of that 2.7 million. Another expense priority that I would like all of you to be aware of is our need for teachers to help meet the demands of a growing staff. You know, board members, from our many conversations over the past many years, that we have had continuing enrollment in the school district. We used to average approximately 150 to 160 students at each grade level. We now average between 200 and 210. And the district's demographic study that we did six years ago showed that was going to be a continuing trend in the district. We've already felt the pinch at Enfield, and as we all know, that's one of the reasons why we're building a brand new building. We've already felt the pinch at Erdenheim. Erdenheim very quickly on needed additional classrooms, and an addition was built. A cafeteria addition was built. We've had to rearrange some of the space that we had, office space, and readjust that in the building and do some renovations in Erdenheim because of that. And already, we're pinched again. So we know what these expanding class sizes are doing. And as a result, we need new teachers to help us with growing enrollments. At the middle school, we were looking at over 30 students per class in some of our subject areas. That helps to explain why we're hiring some new teachers there. At the high school as well, not only are we growing, but growing enrollments means more desire for additional coursework that our students would like to be able to take or to be able to fit into other courses that already exist. So the first four positions here address all of those issues, and the last two are because of needs within special education we're seeing more issues with children coming in in need of occupational therapy as well as physical therapy services. So we, meet, we need more time for those specialists to be on board to address the time they spend with those children as per their IEPs. We also have had a request from the technology department for an increase in the days of our instructional tech specialists. So let me give you a clear cut example. You see Nassim Figueroa over there, 
who works with Mr. Oliver. She normally never attends board meetings. But we don't have enough people in order to be able to attend to all of the tech needs that we have based on the growing use of technology throughout the district and the growing need for evening events and other events that require technology and somebody to operate the equipment. Thank you, Nassim. This is new, new course programming. So again, we are trying, again, to be responsive not only to the Pennsylvania core curriculum and standards and those demands, but also to what our students and our families are telling us, as well as our staff members who are recommending to us, you know, we really believe we need a course in. So we solicit feedback from our faculty, and we listen to our students in terms of what they're asking for. So this year, we implemented a new course at the fourth and fifth grade level in human growth and development, new health cycle for those grade levels. We implement, we're implementing for next year a new course in civics at the middle school. And at the high school, you can see a listing of all of the new courses that have been requested. And again, depending upon enrollment figures, some or all of those courses will run next year. Just to give you a little bit of a look back at tax increases over time so that you can see where we are now and how that compares, this figure in red is the tax increase that we are proposing for next year, 1.96%. You see that it really does fit in with all of the increases that we've basically had since 2011, 2012. And one point that I would like to drive home, this is inclusive of any of the debt that we have incurred for the construction of our new elementary school and all of the improvements, fields, as well as interior spaces at the high school. So for many years, of course, these increases, which were fairly similar, did not include the debt to the extent that it is today. And back in the day, these large increases were actually the result of the debt incurred for the Erdenheim Elementary School building project. And as you can see, they were at far different levels because of that building project than what we have today due to our current building projects. So we have really, really driven home the point that we are working very, very hard. We know that people don't like any tax increase, but we're working really, really hard to maintain small, stable, consistent increases over time. And if you remember from the beginning of the presentation, with a 2.3% Act 1 index, this is well, oh, excuse me, this is well below 2.3% at 1.96. So thank you, especially to Mr. King, for all of his crunching of the numbers, and to all of our administrative staff for all of your hard work in helping to make this happen, despite new course programming, new teaching staff that we are recommending, and significant building projects within the district. So this just shows you that in language that may be a little bit easier to understand in terms of what does that mean for an average resident. So just to show you from three years ago, the average monthly tax increase based on the average assessment of a home was $9.16. Last year, it was $8.49, and this year, it's $8.15. So it's going down. Don't hold me to that for the future. It's going down this year. We're going to take credit for it. And yearly tax increases, similarly, as you can see, we went from two years ago from $110 per year based on the average assessment of a home to $98 for next year. So again, we're, we're really going in the right direction. You can see that those monthly tax increases averaged a little bit under 1.94% of an increase in the last seven years. Previous years, the average increase was actually over 4.22%. Okay. Ken finally refers to this as the hacker years. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> he is. He's there for six of the last seven. Previous construction debt years, 
averaged 5.6% in tax increases. The current project debt years, all the years we've incurred debt, the past two, it averages around 2%. And again, our current increase, 1.96. So thank you everyone in the community for your commitment to our kids, whether it's through your work, whether it's through sending your children to us so that we can take care of them, but especially to all of you, our board, for your support. You've been incredible in terms of always supporting the good things that we're trying to do for our kids, and we certainly appreciate it. So thank you. Questions, anything? Thank you, Dr. Hacker. All good information. Would this be available on uh, yeah, the website? website. Oh, in detail. Jordan, in particular, oh, she'll be riveted. You'll give him a quiz. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, on to new business um, personnel. The Board of School Directors approves the following personnel as presented in the attachment. Confidential personnel, certificated personnel, support personnel, temporary personnel, Extended school year, extra pay for extra responsibilities, and conference workshop attendance. Is there a motion? Is there a motion? Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any comments or questions? I would just like to comment that one of the people listed on the personnel agenda uh, is going to be employed full time as a teacher. She's been a phenomenal long term sub for us. Rachel Foley is here this evening. Rachel, congratulations. <laughs> And as Rachel can testify, none of these positions are given to anyone. She went through the same rigorous <laughs> interview process as any other candidate. And I know that Mr. Fuller and his team gave careful consideration to making the selection as they always do, as all of our principals do. So Rachel, you certainly earned your way into this position. She's been a devoted long-term sub. She was a member, by the way, also of our new elementary school construction design team and contributed a lot of wonderful ideas. She's a resident. We're happy you could be here this evening and congratulations. Aye. No one was going to vote no after that. <laughs> <laughs> MCIU VHS contract. The Board of School Directors approves the agreement between the School District of Springfield Township and the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit for the virtual high school program, effective July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020, in the annual amount of $5,700 plus selected course fees listed in the attached agreement, attachment LL. Is there a motion? Second? Any comments or questions? <laughs> Mr. Bedard. Aye. Mr. Chapman. Aye. Ms. Jordan. Aye. Mr. Lapidus. Aye. Ms. Sarsfield. Aye. Ms. Sapinski. Aye. Dr. Terry Peskin. Aye. Number three, extended school year services, PHMC Integrated, DBA Fairwald Academy, FNA Wordsworth Academy. Uh, the Board of School Directors approves the agreement between Fairwald Academy and Springfield Township School District for student 20190619-01 for the 2019 extended school year program. Is there a motion? motion. And a second? second? Any comments or questions? Mr. King? Mr. Bedard. Aye. Mr. Chapman. Aye. Ms. Jordan. Aye. Mr. Lapidus. Aye. Ms. Sarsfield. Aye. Ms. Lipinski. Aye. Dr. Terry Peskin. Aye. Number four, school dude upgrade. Board of School Directors approves the proposal with School Dude, that's a great name, for platform <laughs> upgrades to Event Essentials Pro for district-wide connectivity for school event calendar scheduling in the amount of $4,133.37 for the term of June 1st, 2019 to June 30th, 2020, attachment MM. Is there a motion? Motion. Second? Second. Okay. Any comments or questions? Mr. King? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm very surprised. Did you say the name again? 
School, <laughs> school dude. <laughs> he just wanted a game. <laughs> school dude. Aye. Appraisal services. The Board of School Directors approves the quote fee from Silverman and Company for real estate appraisal services related to one tax assessment appeal involving three residential parcels in the amount of $2,500 as recommended by the Finance Committee. Is there a motion? motion. And a second? Second. Any, any comments or questions? Aye. Number seven, high school project change orders. The Board of School Directors approves the following. I'm sorry. Did I miss one? Sorry. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I saw real estate tax appeal. Um, number six, attorney for real estate tax appeal. The Board of School Directors approves the hourly rate fee quote, including reimbursable expenses with Hughes, Kalkenbrenner, and Ozorowski LLP to represent the district in one tax assessment appeal involving three residential parcels. Is there a motion? motion. And a second? second? Any comments or questions? Mr. Bain? Mr. Bedard. Aye. Mr. Chapman. Aye. Ms. Jordan. Aye. Mr. Lapidus. Aye. Ms. Sarsky. Aye. Ms. Aye. Aye. Number seven, high school project change orders. The Board of School Directors approves the following change order, number SC-CO004, pertaining to the high school renovation project to the Blair Corporation for the removal of unsuitable soil, additional rock excavation, fence and sidewalk modifications, and replacement of the maintenance building roof inlet in the amount of $80,766.50 as recommended by the property committee. Is there a motion? <coughs> and a second? second? Any comments or questions? Mr. Mr. Bain? Mr. Bedard. Aye. Mr. Chapman. Aye. Ms. Jordan. Aye. Ms. Lapidus. Aye. Ms. Sarsky. Aye. Ms. Kapinski. Aye. Dr. Kapinski. Aye. Number eight, 2018, 2019 budget items. The Board of School Directors approves the budget resolutions for the following 2019, 2020 budget items. The 2019, 2020 school year expenditure budget in the amount of $62,022,403 requiring a tax rate of 33.7102 mills representing an increase of 0.6448 mills or an increase of 1.96% over the current tax rate. B, the resolution for homestead farmstead exclusion as required by the Special Session Act 1 of 2006 in order for taxpayers to receive taxpayer relief funds 5,299 households will receive a reduction in the amount of $366 from their tax bills. Is there a motion? motion. And a second. second. Any comments or questions? Mr. Bain? Mr. Bedard. Aye. Mr. Chapman. Aye. Ms. Jordan. Aye. Mr. Lapidus. Aye. Ms. Sarsky. Aye. Ms. Kapinski. Aye. Dr. Kapinski. Aye. Number nine, sports and student accident insurance for 2019-2020. The Board of School Directors approves the purchase of insurance from Axis Insurance Company through All Risks LTD for the 2019-2020 school year at an annual cost of $500 for catastrophic accident insurance. Attachment NN. Is there a motion? motion. And a second? second? Any comments or questions? Mr. Bain? Mr. Bedard. Aye. Mr. Chapman. Aye. Ms. Jordan. Aye. Mr. Lapidus. Aye. Ms. Sarsky. Aye. Ms. Kapinski. Aye. Dr. Karapinski. Aye. Number 10, Nestle Waters Agreement. Board of School Directors approves the agreement with Nestle Waters for the rental of a water cooler and replacement water at the administration building in the amount not to exceed $850. Is there a motion? motion. And a second? second? Any comments or questions? Mr. Bedard. Aye. Mr. Chapman. Aye. Ms. Jordan. Aye. Mr. Lapidus. Aye. Ms. Sarsky. Aye. Ms. Kapinski. Aye. Dr. Karapinski. 
Aye. Number 11, fire monitoring services. The Board of School Directors approves the quotation for district-wide fire central monitoring with Wayman Protection, Inc. in the amount of $5,714. Is there a motion? Motion. And a second? Any comments or questions? Aye. Number 12, Memorandum of Understanding. The Board of School Directors approves the Memorandum of Understanding between Springfield Township Police Department and School District of Springfield Township. Is there a motion? Motion. And a second? Second. Any comments or questions? Mr. Fink? Aye. Number 13, Professional Development and Coaching Agreement. The Board of School Directors approves the agreement with Dr. Terry Erbacher to provide professional development and coaching with the district clinical support team at the cost of $1,500 for one day of training on June 24, 2019. Is there a motion? Second. <laughs> Any comments or questions? Aye. Number 14, MCIU subcontract agreement. The Board of School Directors approves the contract for services with the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit for the coordination of school-based access program for the period July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. Is there a motion? motion. And a second? Okay. Any comments or questions? Number 15, MCIU ESL Consultative Support. The Board of School Directors approves the contract with the MCIU for ESL Consultative Support for July 30th and 31st, 2019 to provide technical assistance in the implementation of our English Language Services Program Plan. Is there a motion? Motion. <coughs> and a second? Second. Any comments or questions? Aye. Number 16, Act 93, Administrative Compensation Plan. The Board of School Directors approves the Act 93 Administrative Compensation Plan effective July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2022. Is there a motion? Motion. And a second. Any comments or questions? Aye. Number 17, Confidential Settlement and Release Agreement. The Board of School Directors approves the Confidential Settlement and Release Agreement for 2019 Extended School Year Services for student 2019619-02. Is there a motion? Motion. And a second. It's corrected to two. Okay. I'm sorry, the motion was? Second. Second. <coughs> Any comments or questions? Aye. Are there any public comments on non agenda items? Okay. Share your name and. Yes. Yeah. So um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you for all the good work um, that uh, Dr. Hacker has been doing in administrative staff in terms of supporting the efforts of parental involvement and really the transparency within the district. Um, as Multicultural Parent Association Parent Liaison, I'd like to thank you for your due service and continued service and look forward to the um, future reporting of meetings for the Social Justice and Equity um, committee and just would like to say thank you and look forward to another good year. Thanks so much, Angela. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Future meeting dates, 
Um, interim board meeting Tuesday, August 6, 2019, 7 o'clock p.m. in the middle school library and a school regular school board meeting on Tuesday, uh, August 20th, 2019 at 7 p.m. in the middle school library. We have a... Um, we just want to wish sorry. everyone... Um, Can I interrupt you? Sorry. Yes. Do we have a confirmed property committee meeting? We do. Do you remember the date of hand, Craig? Oh, so. July 31st okay. at 815. Uh, so I just wanted to add that to the agenda. Okay. Thank you. And Happy summer, everyone. Thank you for a great <laughs> school year. And let's hope everyone has a safe and wonderful and enjoyable summer. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you.